Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I've just been thinking about what I want to do now that summer's sort of uh, arriving here in New Zealand and um, there's going to be more of an opportunity to get out into the bush. And what I've decided I'm going to do um, over the next couple of months or so is to build another tramping radio. Um, and what I want to try and do is see if I can build a radio uh, in the sort of the form factor of that little CW one there, but being single sideband. So I'm going to base it on this radio. It was one I built back in uh, back in April, if I recall. It's a 20 meter single sideband radio. Um, and before I go sort of through back through what it is, um, you'll see there that from a volume point of view, it's it's you know, it's not too bad, um, but reasonably large. I'm just wondering if I can sort of squeeze that down into a form factor similar to the CW radio, but I don't think it's going to be feasible to to get it into sort of that height. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to basically build it into, into this. So same footprint, but with a little bit more sort of vertical height. Uh, it gives me some more room then to uh, expand that dividing wall there between the transmitter or the RF, the high power RF side and the, and the low power side. Make it a lot higher, which gives me then some more real estate to attach things to. Um, in this particular case, I'll have to have, like we have over here, a microphone amplifier which I didn't have to have obviously on the CW radio so that's going to be um, the attempt um, I'm I, at this stage of the game I'm not playing around with surface mounted devices uh, and I don't have and I don't really want to get into the game of trying to make any um, specialized circuit boards so I'm going to stick with my current way of doing business and that's to use this strip board here but uh, trying to make this obviously a lot smaller to get it to fit into here. So um, that's going to be the plan. Now before I sort of get into the, the components, uh, if, if you might recall that this particular radio here, um, like I say, single sideband, single conversion uh, radio with a 9 MHz uh, IF, um, I'm going to pretty well use this to be the, the basis of uh, the next radio, or the tramping radio here. Um, RF comes in over there. Um, got a TR relay there, a switching between the uh, transmit and receive, as well as switching the 12 volts for the various circuits. A uh, little bandpass filter down there for, uh, well like I say, it will be for 40 megahertz. Um, say not 40 megahertz, sorry, for the 40 meter band. Um, I've decided to go for 40 meters as opposed to 80, uh, because some of the up and coming uh, open, or not for open day, but sort of portable days here in New Zealand, uh, by all accounts, are going to be 40 meters and above in frequency so uh, and there's no point in me sort of concentrating on 80 meters if if no one's going to be transmitting on that and also has the uh, the added spin-off too that the antenna lengths are uh, quite a bit smaller than obviously 80 meters anyway so it will be coming down through a uh, a 40 meter bandpass filter um, the antenna amplifier will be similar again like this one here I'll use a J310 so I can get a nice quiet uh, amplifier there. Um, I think the, the I, again I'll, I'll look to use LT Spice to sign uh, fine tune these circuits uh, on paper before committing them, and then um, I guess fine tune them actually built up. Uh, in this particular case, it comes up. There's two IF amplifiers here, uh, and the nine megahertz um, centered uh, crystal filter there. Uh, in this particular configuration, again I'm going to do the arrangement where on uh, receive, um, this is our mixer with a, uh, a variable frequency coming in off the SI5351 through the filter and on this side will be um, the product detector with the beat frequency oscillator coming out of the SI5351 and then on transmit things reverse so this will become the variable frequency, this will become the beat frequency um, and everything will go in the opposite direction. Uh, the beauty of that is, and it gets around problems I've had in earlier builds, uh, where I tried to use um, the same IF amplifier strip for both transmit and receive, is I had a crossover network here. Um, and while it worked, uh, quite often I'd have a problem with, um, with feedback, where, for example, on transmit here, we'd have quite a low signal here, amplified, bit reduced through the filter, amplified again. We get to here, uh, and the, the, the contacts the double pole double throw relay was so close that some of that higher power RF was finding itself back onto this side and going back through the loop again um, and then eventually uh, uh, oscillating so 
this particular arrangement here with having the SI5351 swap its beat and its uh, variable frequency ports depending on transmit and receive works really well. So I'm going to, I'm going to do exactly that again. Uh, the audio frequency amplifier up here um, is an LM380. Um, I'll, I'll use that again. And um, I think I will use again uh, this little um, uh, display here. So rather than using an OLED, uh, I'm going to use this little um, eight, um, seven segment um, four digit display. Uh, I, I, I like these because the last couple of radios where I have used these from an RF point of view, really, really quiet, which is good. So um, that's the plan. I've had a few problems in the past with the OLED displays being a little bit noisy. Uh, and no matter how much sort of um, shielding and other sort of techniques to try and cut down the noise, I just really couldn't make it work. So at this stage of the game, I'm, I, for me personally, I'm more than happy with this. It works well. Um, you recall you push down the switch and you go into a fine tune mode. Um, push the switch again, the LED will turn off, which means it's on, um, it's on a faster tuning step. Um, and that works, like I say, for me personally, works well. The little push button switch will be the same. It will just cycle the display down from off uh, over three intensity levels just to, to save a little bit more current there on the battery. Uh, the uh, mixers there, again, I'll use the Tough Threes. They were very kindly given to me a while back, so I've got a couple more of those, uh, which I'll use. Um, just the footprint there is just uh, quite a bit smaller than the SBL1, which will help in trying to save some space. Um, for the crystal filter itself, I'm going to use one of these. Um, some people may recognize it. It's, it comes off a board where there's three of these, uh, one AM and an upper and a lower sideband filter, uh, uh, readily available on um, eBay, um, quite cheap. Uh, 1,000 ohms input and output resistance uh, and a capacitance of 25 picofarads. So uh, I think, oops, size-wise, that's going to be quite good, actually. So very comparable with what I've got there. and. Um, in terms of trying to make that fit into you know, that into here, uh, that would be quite good. And now with the, with the additional vertical space, I can have it sitting quite high and then have on either side um, the two IF amplifiers. And even potentially if I was to mount that up on, um, like we have here, an elevated wall or uh, shielding, um, might even be able to turn these two amplifiers through 90 degrees and have them mounted here. Um, I'll be able to bring this up quite a bit higher so you know things to think about later on down track but uh, that's the plan just to try and make it all squeeze in so like I say uh, reuse that display there from an RF point of view I've been more than happy with that um, again little Pro Mini uh, you know cheapest chips here so um, I'll look to use that to be the um, the main controller for it um, SI5351 I see this one here, I haven't actually calibrated, otherwise I would have written down the calibration frequency like we did over here. So I had to run that through the calibration program again just to make sure that uh, I'll be outputting um, the right frequency. Noting too, that doesn't have to, you know, 40 meters um, is not a channelized band, but you know, if I can get that sort of reasonably close to what it should be, then hey, that's great. And again, like I say, use those two tough threes. Uh, nice and small from a uh, form factor point of view, so that'll be good. The speaker itself, it'll be a, um, a headphone radio, uh, but with the ability to have a little plug-in, if not permanently mounted with a very small little switch uh, speaker here. This one comes out of an old handheld radio, which um, I had lying around. Um, quite a nice speaker and quite loud, so um, we'll see if that's going to be sort of usable. Again, so from a, you know, again, from a form factor point of view, uh, really small and should be able to squeeze it in somewhere. Uh, the TR switch, uh, this is only switching uh, 12 volts, there's no RF going through this um, and, and in that case, oops, uh, not even high current of that so um, I'll look to use one of these again. I've uh, got a whole stack of these in through AliExpress, gosh I think it was something like 30 for you know, not a lot of money so uh, I've got a lot of those lying around which are quite useful. I'll probably just look to parallel, parallel those up, those, um, it's a double, double pole double throw if I parallel those up and turn into a, um, a single pole double throw with double the current car current current carrying capacity, CCC, um, that'll work out quite well, I think. Uh, and again, just another little 12 volt uh, double pole. Uh, so again, single pole double throw relay there, which will be the um, the antenna switch, which should work quite well. Anyway, so that's the uh, the plan that's going to be for the next um, few months. Uh, look to use LT Spice, like I said, just to 
uh, have another go at that and um, try and sort of optimize the circuits as much as I can before actually committing them uh, another, in other words you know melting solder and putting on the boards okay I'll say 73s there um, if people want I'll, I'll you know again these these are not supposed to be tutorials I am no way in any shape or form an expert in any of this it's just me playing around um, and more than happy to record um, that you know where I've got to as a log and put them up online so if people are interested I'll, I'll do the same thing with this particular radio but uh, that's the plan moving forward for the next few months and uh, like I say, I'll catch you next time. Cheers all.